Hi, and my name is Kieran. I'm from Woodruff School, which is in Lyme Regis, and in February 2013, 16 students from years 9 to 12 came together to learn recording, research and interviewing skills so that we could record stories with older people from the town about their memories of growing up and working in Lyme Regis. Maisie, Ellie, Rory and Ruth from Year 10, and Polly, Brianna and myself, Kieran, from Year 12, interviewed David Cousins. David was keen to talk about his memories from Lyme Regis Boys Club, the landslip that happened in the 1960s, his love for the town cinema, and his thoughts and feelings about our very own Woodruff School. As a boy, David went to Woodruff Grammar School. Bree, Polly and myself from Year 12 invited David back to Woodruff so that we could give him a guided tour and show him some of the changes that have happened to the school in the last 60 years. So this would have been the old building that would have been here when you were here, and is it sort of vaguely similar, or is it...? Well, the frontage of the building is probably exactly the same, and at that time there were just 350 pupils, but it seemed like a massive building to us coming up from a little church school. But basically the front of the building is the same. So is this, all, is this the whole school? With this the whole school was just this front portion. The reception area was the school hall, again, which seemed massive to us at the time. But this was basically the school. OK, David, um, we're just going to go up to the reception area now, part of the old school. Um, we're just going to sort of talk about the inside and whether it's changed and how much it's changed. And um, we'll do some... Well, then we'll go up the stairs. And... Yeah, I hope, it's, I hope it hasn't changed too much. Well, I'm happy to say it has. <laughs> has it? <laughs> Not this portion, but the school is a, a very, very different uh, building now. <laughs> It's expanded quite a lot as well. Well, though. you had 350 people when I came here. Now you've got, I understand, over 1,000. About 1,300 now. There you go. Okay, so we're in the main reception area of um, the Woodruff School now, which is part of the old building. And um, was, was this a reception? No, it when wasn't you a reception. This, believe it or not, is smaller now because of the work you've done inside it, but was the school hall. The reception, I, I don't recall a real reception area. There was a headmaster's uh, office, which I frequented occasionally, uh, but I don't remember a reception area as such. This was the school hall, which to us at the time, as I've said before, seemed absolutely massive when you came up from the junior school. So this would have been where you had assemblies? This is where you had your school meals, you had your morning service. We always started with a very short service. And, of course, yes, and this was also the gym as well. And the dining area, I mean, everything. As I say, this, this is all new coming up here. It's interesting to note the school coat of, coat of arms there and, and, and the inscription. I wonder how many of you know what that means. Audacia Constanti Arque. That's the first thing we had to learn when I came to the school, and woe betide any of us if we couldn't remember it. I have no idea, personally. Not a Latin student? We, we did <laughs> Latin in year seven. Well, that means, and it's a school motto, actually, courage and determination. That's something, you didn't something I've learned, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, so we're just going down the uh, left-hand side of this corridor. I, I recall this corridor well, because... We used to be able to look down from here into the hall and watch them doing ballroom dancing and sometimes a school play. So you could come along there and make, actually, and try and distract the people below, which was an, a crime at the time, but I'm afraid we did it. But this was the, the corridor which we walked down through. Okay, so what I, what I really wanted to show you was uh, these school photos. We've got school photos from here from 1939. We were just wondering um, whether or not you uh, recognise any of the people in the later photos down this and side I of the I recognise some in this, actually because uh, I think that was Mr. Thomas who taught mathematics. I do recognise him. That's uh, Mr. Taylor, Mr. G.A. Taylor, and we used to call him Gat, G.A. Taylor. And if you were in his good books, you remember the Gat's Gestapo. I remember that was a, a sign we had then. Again, there he is again, you see, Mr. Mr. Thomas. I don't obviously recognise any of the pupils here at all. I think... I do. That's that's the Latin mistress, Miss Gordon. She was here when I was here. That's Miss Mail, who taught me history. In fact, she was so emotional, she'd break into tears when she described some of the events in history. But that, and that's Miss Partridge. She was the headmaster's secretary, and she was 
very, I don't know how to put this, but she used to smoke a pipe, and we could understand why she smoked a pipe, but I suppose later in life we come to realise why a lady would smoke a pipe, but at the time we did So, um, gone further down the corridor now, and we've got... Uh, Lyme Regis Grammar School, one when I went there, it was comprised mainly of pupils from Lyme Regis, Axminster, Thornclam, and a few of the surrounding villages. Some of them came in on the train, which was quite, quite, a, quite a good sight. But you'd start the day always, you'd always start the day with assembly because there's only 350 of you there, that's a lot. Everybody was sir or miss, there was no familiarities. The teachers were strict, I have to tell you that. They all wore caps and gowns, those with degrees, they were taught in those and they were very, very strict. Games were compulsory. In fact, one of the great traditions at the grammar school then was the annual cross country. You had to run. Unless you had a doctor's certificate, you ran. Come hell, come shine, you ran. And I remember at the end, you ran through a river. You had to finish by running through the river at the end. And there was no get out. You had to do it. Uh, a lot of the boys, myself included, we thought we'd get an advantage because if you could run in hockey boots, Overall, through that mud up your neck, you had a better chance, you know, to stay on your feet. And I remember borrowing one young lady's hockey boots because I liked her very much. Unfortunately, my feet were twice the size of hers, and I hobbled all the way around. But you didn't care; it was her boots, you see. 